everybody and welcome to today's live session on compensation and variable pay. My name is Cheryl Grant and I'm the Solutions Centre Director for the APAC region and with me today is my colleague Claire who will be sharing with us some key highlights from this release. Thanks Cheryl. Um, I'm Claire Badger. I'm the Talent Practice Director here in the APAC region, so specialising in, in all things talent. So Claire, there seems to be a common thread uh, running through the H1 release with uh, admin usability. So can you tell me what's happening in the compensation area? Yeah, there, there is a general theme, uh, particularly around compensation, where more and more of the traditional XML configuration is, is moving to the admin centre. Um, and that just means that, that customers can um, have far greater ability to maintain their own configuration without the need to um, come through to a partner. Um, so some examples of that. So the first one uh, is around forced comments. Uh, so for all you comp users out there, uh, that's when we uh, enforce that uh, a planner must enter a comment uh, to validate uh, the recommendation that they, they may have put through. Um, so for this release, there's a there's a new config option which is coming through to the design works sheet page, uh, which is called define standard validation rules. Um, and so within that, you can configure different uh, enforced comment rules. So for example, uh, if someone doesn't receive any sort of an increase, uh, you could enforce that a manager has to enter a comment. Uh, you could also enforce if they're going outside of the um, recommendations or guidelines that have been put in place, you can also enforce that comment to come through as well. Um, another one that's now in admin centre as opposed to XML is around uh, managing the pay ranges um, and then also any salary validations that you want to configure. So um, if you wanted to put ceilings in place, uh, i.e. you can't put in any sort of a recommendation over that puts someone over 120% comp ratio um, or a certain range penetration. Um, so those validations also are now in admin center. Uh, the other configuration that's moved to admin center is, is the configuration around your ratings. So previously you could quite easily just select, you know, is it a performance rating that you're um, going to be using uh, as the point of reference in compensation or um, and where's that coming from? So is it coming from a form or is it coming from um, like a, a portlet uh, in employee profile and something like that? Now you can also then, I guess, go to that next level of detail within admin centre of saying it's not the overall performance rating we want to look at. We want to look at the overall objective rating or we want to look at the overall competency rating. So, again, you can configure that in admin centre now. Um, again, previously in, in XML. So quite a few different uh, options now in Admin Centre for configuration, which I think makes everyone's life easier, not just customers, partners as well. Absolutely. Yeah, some good examples. Um, can you tell us what's happening with changes impacting the appearance of the planning worksheet? Yeah, so there's a couple. Um, so one of them is around um, validations. So validations are you can build certain columns within the worksheet, which will then pass through a validation to make sure that the entry is valid. Um, so maybe you want to have a validation um, that a certain person um, maybe isn't receiving something based on a certain field. So we might say, um, you know, we only want people that have this type of um, contract to receive a certain increase. Um, so you can build those custom validations. Mm -hmm. Previously, if you had that validation in place, the column had to show um, and they were always, you know, a little out of place. We tried to hide them at the end of the worksheet so that they had minimal impact to the planner's experience um, and they had to show otherwise they wouldn't validate. Uh, from this release, you can now hide those validation columns, but the validation will still trigger, um, which means uh, you, you can show less columns and things like that, which is was definitely a UI enhancement. And then just staying on the validations, you used to only be able to have a maximum of three custom validations. That's now been increased to five. Um, so for those more complex customers, um, more flexibility to increase those validations to ensure um, that the planners are, are really following the right sort of guidelines and recommendations that, that you're putting in place. Another UI one is um, 
the adjustable widths of the columns, um, particularly with the drop down or what we call enumerated fields. Um, previously, if you put an enumerated column in, it was a fixed width and you couldn't really do much with it. So, um, you know, maybe the, the drop down was only just little numbers, but the column was like, whoop. Um, and so that really affected the aesthetic of the sheet, um, which wasn't great. So um, again, with this release, we can now adjust the widths of those columns. So we're not taking up so much commercial property on the sheet. Yeah. And then the final one I'll just, just talk about, and probably the one I'm most excited about from a UI perspective, is that we can now configure custom views for stock and bonus tabs. And a lot of customers may not even use these tabs because they were so inflexible that we avoided using them. Um, so they had standard columns and you had to stick within those realms um, of the columns. And so for most customers, they became a little unusable. Um, so we always stuck, stuck with what we call the salary tab. Um, now uh, you're able to configure custom views and custom columns on your stock and bonus tabs, which will mean that we'll have greater flexibility to use those for customers, um, which will just mean, you know, you can break out your salary planning and your bonus tabs so that planners have two distinct areas to go and do their planning um, without needing to have a massive long uh, compensation worksheet. Mm. So I'm pretty excited about that one. Yeah, I think anything that stops the scrolling forever to the right-hand side is a good thing. <laughs> and, and losing your scroll bar. That's yes. my favourite thing. Yes. So, so that's some of the, I guess, appearance changes. What about usability improvements that we've got coming? Right. Um, so a big one would be in the executive review. Um, so the executive review is heavily used for, for compensation, um, both by just your everyday planners, but also in particular the executive planners within the organisation. So those top tiers of the, of the company that need to, to get that high level roll up view. Um, and what is coming in this release is um, that you can now um, manage more executive review filters. Um, and they're a little bit more like Excel based filters now. Mm -hmm. um, so you can filter with, you know, contains or between or greater than. Um, so you've got a lot more options available to you to filter to the information that you're really wanting to look at um, and drill into those exceptions that 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 sort of level of the organisation really want to look at. Um, so, you know, an, an example might be looking at the comp ratio or looking at um, a second manager hierarchy, which a lot of customers mm -hmm. use their custom planning structure. So a lot more different filters available. Sounds uh, like a very useful new feature. Um, and I especially liked the uh, the filter that you'd be able to pull out just the entries that have got comments on them and the fact that you can save yeah. it for reuse later. So, yeah, nice feature. Yeah, I think the saving for later is, is you know, very useful because the, so many planners, they go in and out in that very short period that the customers have to do their, their planning in the cycle. Um, the executive review, they jump in and out and in and out. So the saving of the filters, yeah, is really good. Um, another one uh, would be the ability to map employee profile fields into an EC enabled workshop, uh, sorry, worksheet. So uh, let's break this down and explain it a little bit. So um, when we say an EC, employee central enabled worksheet, um, that is for customers that use employee central, we typically map the uh, compensation worksheet completely to employee central. So it's pulling in all of your um, all of your employee data, all of your salary data directly from Employee Central. But there's still some little fields that remain in employee profile. So some examples would be, you know, risk of loss, impact of loss, um, potentially some sort of extended profile information that doesn't actually reside in Employee Central. Um, and when you've got the Employee Central enabled worksheet, you can't actually bring that stuff in. Uh, and so with this release, they have brought in the ability to map some of that employee profile data through. Um, so again, using the example around risk of loss and impact of loss, um, we can bring those fields in from employee profile. And that's going to give you a much better view around um, assessing the retention risk to the organisation whilst you're reviewing remuneration. So you're getting that, you know, holistic view of an employee when you're making these recommendations. 
I think, um, yeah, that's a, a really good idea. And uh, I know traditionally we had to go out to things such as when we're doing compensation calibration sessions to see those talent flags overlaid whilst we were looking at um, at the comp results and also just going back to the employee profile for looking at that and updating it. So having all of that at your, your fingertips whilst you're planning uh, is a really nice new feature. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely, definitely. It kind of really ties it all back together again. So the next sort of key call outs from the release is all around spot awards so this is the um you know the recommendations to uh give people awards based on um you know good things that they've done in the organization or little incentives that you can provide so there's been a number of um enhancements around the spot awards programs so the first one um is around uh budget approvers so when someone goes and puts in a spot award um, it goes through to the budget approver and, and you know, they approve or decline it. Uh, in the approval, uh, it's now been added the remaining balance in their budget just so that, you know, they can see how much is left in their budget when they're approving each request. Um, very much something that, that people have been asking for, so a, a good enhancement there. And then the other thing um, that they've done around the budgets is the budget can now when you recommend someone, the budget can either be coming from the person nominating their hierarchical budget, or it can also be the default, which it is today, which is the nominee's hierarchy budget. So you've got a little bit more flexibility in controlling whose budget actually pays for the awards um, that are going out. So Claire, if we make the um, remaining budget view uh, sorry, viewable for specific roles, is it something that you can do for just specific budget approvers or does it have to be all budget approvers making that viewable? Yeah, so it is It is for all. So it's uh, if you're a budget approver, you would have the ability to see your remaining budget. Yeah. Okay. Staying on spot awards, um, another, and I think this is quite neat um, and, and it really brings some parity to some of those third-party um, reward and recognition tools. Um, so a lot of customers will have a spot award program that has zero dollar value um, or even those with a dollar value. Uh, you can now configure an award certificate for spot awards. Um, so, you know, maybe I've been nominated just as a thank you award, which doesn't have a monetary value, um, but I can now go and generate a certificate. Um, you know, you can print it, you can go and save it and managers could go and give that to their team. Um, so that's a nice little gesture to give just on some of those recognition awards, which aren't necessarily incentive based. Um, just one, I guess, prerequisite is it does use document generation. Um, so therefore, to, to be able to use that, you do have to have Employee Central. Um, so for customers using reward and recognition with no Employee Central, that, that wouldn't be available at this time. Okay. Um, so what other new features are of benefit to administrators in this release? Um, a call out probably for the admin permissions per template. So right now, if, if you give someone the ability to manage compensation, they can actually see all the templates. So they could see, you know, if you have got different templates for different um, companies within your business or you've got templates um, for historical years, um, you used to see them all. And with this release, they've brought out role-based permissions, which will be able to control which template an admin actually can see. Mm -hmm. um, and so particularly for organisations that run a, a decentralised approach to administering comp, um, that's definitely a huge benefit. So you'll be able to have separate permissions um, to administer each template. Uh, so a good one there. And, and when we're talking about those separate permissions or role-based permissions, are we talking traditional platform role-based permissions or permissions on the compensation plan itself? Yeah, no. So we are talking um, role-based permissions, so platform role-based permissions. I guess it's quite similar to how you sort of permission um, a performance template. Mm -hmm. So those sort of RBPs, field-based permissions are still sitting in, in comp administration. So there's no change to that. Okay. Um, another admin feature that's probably quite good is the cloning of templates. 
Um, so each year, as we all know, as comp administrators, we have to create our new templates. Um, and that contains many different elements, right? So it's not just cloning a template and you're good to go. Uh, you've got lookup tables. You might have pay ranges that you need to update. You might have eligibility rules that you need to update. So there's lots of different components that you need to look at. Um, and so success factors have acknowledged that. And, um, and so what they've added now is that when you clone a template, so let's say you're cloning your 2020 comp template into 2021, it will prompt you to update your lookup tables. So it's just that nice little reminder to not forget to do those extra things. Um, mm -hmm. And you can do it all in one go, all in one go. Okay. So, um, Claire, I see we've got a question in the chat. Do we? You do. Will the exec review filters work on previously completed comp plans? So yes, they will. So the, the filters are, it, it happens to the entire executive review UI. So it, it will be filterable on previous completed plans. Um, obviously the ability to change anything in there would be dependent on your permissions, but you'll definitely be able to filters uh, filter. Mm -hmm. Um, now, we don't have, I think, any other questions, so just pause for a moment if there's any anybody that needs to post a, a question in. Otherwise, um, Claire, thanks for taking us through the changes today. So lots of new features and benefits for both comp planners and the comp administrators. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Cheryl. It's it's good to talk about them in this sort of forum and uh, appreciate you you being here to discuss them with me. Um, if anyone has any questions at all, you know, you can continue to, to um, post on the post or you can reach out to us directly and we're happy to, to take any of those questions. And for many of our customers that are on the call, we look forward to talking to you about these um, enhancements in more detail um, as we go through your release reviews with you. Great. Thanks, Claire.